Stay with us, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. Let it shine in our hearts and lives. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature sinful. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The congregation may be seated. We continue with the responsive reading of our psalm for the day, Psalm 90. <coughs> Lord, you have been our dwelling place before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. For a thousand years in your sight, or like a day that has just gone by. Or like a watch night. You have set our iniquities before you. Our your sins in the light of your presence. You turn mortals back to dust. You sweep them away in the sleep of death. The length of our days is seventy years or eighty, if we have the strength. Teach us to number our days aright. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal Father, you have placed us in a world of space and time, and through the events of our lives, you bless us with your love. Grant that in this new year, we may know your presence, see your love at work, and live in the light of the event that gives us joy forever, the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this evening is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 51, beginning with the first verse. <coughs> Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, and you seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut, and to the quarry from which, from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion, and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. 
My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, beginning with verse 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. And our gospel lesson today is from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 13, beginning with the sixth verse. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went out to look for fruit on it, but did not find it. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now, I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 71, The Old Year Now Has Passed Away.
Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God upon which our meditation for this evening is based is from the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. This is God's word. So, what's new? Sure, all of us have been on the receiving end of that common conversation starter. How do you respond? <laughs> well, probably in one of two ways. If there is something that is truly noteworthy, that's recently taken place or is being planned in the near future, you probably mentioned that. But if that's not the case, and there's no great newsworthy item to report, chances are you'd exercise the second option and say something along the lines of, ah, uh, not much, or same old, same old. After which, then, you would Try to change the appearance that there's nothing interesting going on in your life by turning the question back on the other person and say, so, what's new with you? What's new for 2022? Right now, it's a blank slate. Only God knows whether this Next year will go down as a, a boom or a bust. It may be a, a banner year of achievements or a banner year of difficulties. First, then again, maybe it'll just be a, a routine, uneventful year marked by another birthday, but no real major changes. Whatever the case may be for us personally in 2022, there is always one thing, or better put, one person that we can count on. Our text points that out. It's Jesus Christ. On account of him, who he is, what he has done, and what he continues to do for us, we can be happily confident, regardless of any personal changes. We can be confident that 2022 will be more of the same. Reason why? Because Jesus Christ is his name, and Jesus Christ is the same. Oh, of course, everybody knows this is the last day of the year. <clears throat> if you're a sports fan, be looking forward to watching a few more bowl games. Business people, Look forward to a, a clean ledger to start the year. And of course, at midnight, the clock begins to tick for all who made New Year's resolutions. However, it must be noted that for Christians, tomorrow, New Year's Day has far more significance than all those things I just mentioned. In the early Christian church, January 1st was originally called the octave of Christmas, or the eighth day of Christmas, when the Christ child was circumcised 
been given the name Jesus. Luke recorded the event with just one single verse. He wrote, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. That name, by far the most common by which we know him, is certainly worthy of our review. While we call him Jesus, derived from the Greek form of his name, when he was growing up, Mary and Joseph would have called him by the more Hebrew sounding Yeshua. They did not come up with that name on their own. It was the name that the angel Gabriel first instructed Mary to give him and later was reinforced by another angel who told Joseph the same thing. And there's that's also what they were told, or why they were told they should name him that, because he shall save his people from their sins. In other words, the name, this name was given him, and this child was given to meet a need, our need. Our need to be delivered from the, the damning consequences of sin before a just and holy God. And the reason he came is reflected in that name. In its simplest form, Jesus means Savior. And that's what he is, our Savior. As beautiful a thought as this is, Though we're, we're only halfway done. He's Jesus Christ. Whereas Jesus is his personal name. Christ is his title. It also is worthy of review. Christ is the Greek or New Testament rendition of the Hebrew or Old Testament word Messiah. They both mean the same thing, the anointed one. Both call to mind a, a solemn Old Testament custom, reserved only for people of special position and honor, kings, priests, and prophets. Anointing, pouring oil on someone's head was a public sign that a person had been set aside by God for a special duty or purpose. While we can find many anointed ones in the Old Testament, we find only one who is called the anointed one. That, of course, is Jesus the Christ, set apart for the special duty by God of saving human beings from their sin. We know how that salvation came about. Jesus accomplished it through his perfect life lived in our place, through his sacrificial death on the cross, died to pay for our sins, for his glorious resurrection that proves our sins have been paid for. And the best news of all is that we, who by God's grace and the work of the Holy Spirit, have been brought to trust in Jesus as our Savior and Messiah, we joyfully bear his name. We are the modern day disciples of Jesus. We are Christians, that is, followers of Christ. Because we are, our eternal future looks bright. And if our eternal future looks bright, well, our temporary future, our future here in this world, 
is bright as well. Because the same Lord and Savior has promised to meet all of our physical, emotional, and, and spiritual needs. How can we be sure? It's all in the name. Jesus Christ is his name. And Jesus Christ is the same. We heard it in our text. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Those are beautiful, powerful, consoling words because they speak of Christ's consistency, his, his constancy, his commitment to us. We could get specific. What do we see in Jesus Christ yesterday that comforts us today? Go to the Bible, for examples. Jesus Christ is true God. And in our God, we see many things. What do the following incidents from the Old Testament bring to mind? The parting of the Red Sea, the destruction of Jericho, the three men in the fiery furnace, Daniel in the lion's den. Or how about these New Testament events? Jesus, still in the storm. Jesus healing countless people. Jesus feeding the 5,000. Jesus raising the dead. In each of those cases, we see the power of God to help his people in their time of need and personal distress. This provides us with a, a great deal of comfort because we are his people today. And Jesus is no less God or no less powerful today than he was yesterday. And yet, we are confident in his power. We can be equally confident in his wisdom and in his plans for his children. Jesus tells us, yes, in this sinful world, we will have trouble. We understand that our Lord may ask us to endure things that we would not have chosen for ourselves. We confidently leave all of these things to God's direction because we see in Jesus something special. We see his compassion. In fact, his compassion for people is one of the chief features of Jesus' character. Think of the, the compassion Jesus had on the crowds that flocked to him. Remember how Jesus gently gathered the little children around him, even when his disciples were trying to shoo them away? Think of the compassion Jesus had, even for those who rejected him. Remember how he wept over Jerusalem? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. You were not willing. Remember how he forgave his tormentors on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Above all, in Jesus, though, we see love. Think of the love he had for his friend Lazarus. And Jesus wept at Lazarus' grave. Think of the love he had for his disciples and, and all his followers. Think of that stubborn, unwavering love for mankind that led him to die for us. And here again, we see good news. Because this same Jesus is here for us today with his power. 
with his compassion, with his love. We are the benefactors. So we can enter this new year with courage and, and confidence. Let's go back to our introductory question. So what's new? Will there be new difficulties to face in 2022? Perhaps. But Christ will be there to help. Will there be sorrow? Maybe. But Christ will be there to comfort us and console us. Will there be decisions to be made? Probably. But Christ will be there to guide us. Will there be times of uncertainty and anxiety? Perhaps. But Christ will be there to cover us in his love and with his personal promise that all things work together for the good of those who love him. Will there be joys and celebrations? There may well be. And Christ will be there to rejoice with us. He'll be there in all those situations and circumstances because he is changeless. That's what Jesus Christ is all about. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in that sameness, we find our strength, our courage, our satisfaction. So, what will 2022 bring? In one sense, only God knows for sure. But in another sense, we could say just more of the same. Because that's who Jesus Christ is. The one described by the hymn writer, our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blasts, and our eternal hope. Amen. And may he who has begun his good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us join in confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
Please rise. We continue with the sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, put out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The ushers may usher the communication.
on the phrases and petitions our Lord Jesus gave us as an outline for prayer. Eternal God, our Creator, in your mercy, you have restored us as your forgiven children, trusting in Jesus' sacrifice and victory in our place. We come before you tonight. We revere your supreme majesty as designer of your universe and author of time. Help us to know you as Lord of our lives here and in eternity, as you have revealed in your holy word. You are kingdom come. Uphold your claim on our hearts, <coughs> reign in our lives, and employ us for sowing the seed of your saving word in more and more hearts in the year ahead. Your will be done. Overcome the influence of Satan on us in this fallen world and make us earnest to conform our desires and our actions to your plan for our future with you. Sustainer of life, you have provided for our bodily necessities in the past year. Fill us with appreciation and trust. Year by year, keep us alert for meeting the needs of others. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Continue to show us your pardon for Jesus' sake and keep us ready to do good even to those who do wrong to us. While there is still while there still is time in this passing life, help us point them to your saving mercy. Defeat the enemy who wants to strangle our faith in disregard for your word. Bring to naught the world's ruinous appeals to our self-centered nature and deliver us from the hold of unrepented sin. <clears throat> be with us through every trouble so that when we depart this life we will still be trusting and walking with our living Savior the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever we look to you as Lord of time governor of your universe head of your church, and we join with angels to adore you, from whom all blessings flow. We rely on Jesus, whose perfect obedience and atoning death have made us acceptable in your sight. His resurrection assures his promises, and we look into the future eagerly awaiting his return. Now then, as your children, we pray with confidence. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We conclude our worship with hymn 76, Jesus, Name of Wondrous Love.
again, it's my pleasure to be able to share God's Word with you as we bring out the old year and bring in the new year, one of God's grace and blessings. Wish you all a very blessed 